Hey, what up, Crypto Warriors? It's Ultra Crypto back at it again. It's Friday, the 12th of March, 2021. Everything, not everything, we have a mixture of red and green here in the market. We had a big dip overnight while we were sleeping, if you're here on the East Coast. <laughs> All right, but we had a big dip overnight, and we're starting to see a little bit of a recovery right now. A little bit of a recovery in the past hour or so for Bitcoin. And wherever Bitcoin goes, we know the rest of the market goes along with it. All right, we're going to be covering today. Uh, a couple of FUD articles as as to why why um, the Bitcoin price may have dipped, and also FUD articles concerning NFTs. Do we really own them when we purchase them? Let's get into it. So the first article is coming out of Coin Telegraph. Whoops, Coin Telegraph. Funny money. Brooklyn Nine Nine Star launches own social currency. So Terry Crews, the Brooklyn Nine Nine Star, is uh, launching its own social cryptocurrency known as Power. And he's launching it on a platform called Roll. I've never heard of Roll. Not saying that, you know, because I've been in the space for a while now that I should know about every single platform out there, but just saying I've never heard of Roll. All right. We're starting to see a lot of celebrities attach themselves to different um, platforms or different cryptos and, you know, everything is about NFTs right now, non fungible tokens and art and all that stuff. Right, and we're we're seeing seeing people at just attaching themselves to different platforms and different cryptos for the money grab. Not saying that's what Terry Crews is doing. I don't want to throw my man under the bus like that. You know, I do look. You know, I do look up to him. He, he, I think he's a good guy. And um, we're starting to see that the same kind of thing that happened back in 2017 is starting to happen again. Attaching themselves to sort of projects they may not fully understand or know about and then you know a couple of years later you, you hear that they have to give back the money in, in the case of 2017 it was ICOs but now we're, we're starting to see you know NFT is, is the new ICOs right so here it is uh, the power token according to him he said that the currency is a means to empower artists his vision is for the currency is um, his vision for the currency is for the people to earn power by selling their art, NFTs, physical goods, and experiences. Well, if you read the first part here, it's saying that this power token, people will be able to own a piece of him. So is it to own a piece of you so that they could go grocery shopping or is it to help uh, artists to sell their goods and sell their NFTs? You know, it, it, or is it both, right? So what what is it? You know, or I, I feel like he, he's trying to do too much here with, with this one thing. I don't know how long he's been in the space. I've never heard about him being in the space. But again, it kind of reminds me of 2017. You know, everybody, DYOR, if you want to jump in and take a look at this, you know, as always, do your own research, right? Next, dropping GBTC premium anonymous group claims BlockFi facing solvency issues due to exposure to the Bitcoin trust. All right, BlockFi. Who's BlockFi? BlockFi is a uh, lending platform where you're able to lend your cryptos. Um, to other uh, people that want to, you know, do high-speed trade, um, trade in or uh, things of that nature, and earn, earn an interest, earn an, a yield on your cri cryptocurrencies. All right, instead of just having to sit on your ledger, you could have have it sit on BlockFi and earn up to six percent for, um, what's it for Bitcoin? All right, but we're seeing that now. People are saying that. Because this, they have this exposure to the GBTC, uh, Bitcoin Trust, that BlockFi may be insolvent. Let's, let's get into it a little bit. An anonymous group has claimed that BlockFi has an estimated $1.8 billion in customer asset invested in Gray B, Grayscale, Gray BCC, Grayscale Investments, GBTC, is facing potential insolvency issues associated with the negative premium on the GBTC shares. Using the negative premium, of minus 7.89 percent on the GBTC shares to illustrate the extent of the problem the anonymous group uh, posits that BlockFi faces a loss of 232 million dollars. That is crazy. Even if these are very successful trading firms, defaults will happen, and BlockFi is the central counterpart counterparty for every retail depositor as well as every corporate borrower since we understand that many of their loans 
or concentrated 100 million plus size loans, a single default can easily wipe out BlockFi's equity base and put them into insolvency. This is why even though I use BlockFi's uh, competitors, right? The reason why I don't use BlockFi is because they're not available here in the great state of New York. But I use uh, Celsius and this is why I tell people, even if you're going, going to use Celsius, link for Celsius, by the way, is in the description below. If you're going to use a thing, something like BlockFi, Celsius, Nexo, don't expose yourself 100% to them. Don't put a large portion of your cryptocurrencies on these platforms because they can go insolvent at any time. And unless you're an insider, you're not going to be getting that crypto back. You're not going to be getting, um, yeah, you're not going to be getting your cryptos back. You know, and this could take years before they even give you your the dollar value of your cryptos uh, back to you, right? So, you know, we, we saw what happened. With, what's it called? Uh, Mount Gox. When did this happen? Mount Gox happened back in 2014. All right. So, not your keys, not your coins. Just be careful out there. All right. So, this is one of the FUD articles. The next FUD article, the biggest FUD article, is coming from uh, uh, Decrypt. All right. Or it's not, you know, well, here it is. Binance investigated by U.S. authorities over U.S. trade and activity. So that's the biggest foot article right there. And I think when this came out, this um, is what caused the market to take a little tank overnight. All right, Binance is the subject of a new CFTC probe that questions wh whether the exchange has let U U.S. traders use the platform. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to get on my soapbox here while we, we we break this apart so what if u.s traders use the platform yes uh, when binance was launched back in 2017 you best believe i was using binance right before they they blocked u.s traders you best believe i was using binance you want to know why because i wanted to trade cryptocurrencies that were, were only available to me through binance and if the likes of New York, especially New York, right? If the likes of New York and the authorities here in the U.S. just allowed these cryptocurrencies or crypto companies or these exchanges to have more expo exposure to uh, different cryptos, then guess what? I wouldn't have to use Binance. You know, I, I would be using an American-made company. All right, but. The fact that the CFTC, where they're stationed or lo located in uh, Chicago, and the SEC, which is located here in the um, great state of New York, <laughs> in New York City, right in the, uh, the backyard of um, Wall Street, right? These two entities that are here in the US, the fact that they could go after a foreign company because U.S. traders are a little bit more sophisticated in the fact that we could use, um, what do you call those, VPNs, right? If Binance bans people from U U.S. people from using their uh, platforms, all they have to do is use a um, VPN and open it up, open an account with a new um, email address, all right? It's not, it's not that hard, all right? So why does Binance, remember crypto, it, the, the whole point of cryptocurrencies is to, to get, get away from, all right, the draconian laws and rules from the traditional financial system. The whole reason for Bitcoin is that anyone around the world could participate on the network. Anyone around the world could be included in the financial uh, system of Bitcoin. So why does the CFTC cares whether or not U.S. citizens are making a little money, all right? If those particular citizens are making a little money and they're not, you know, paying their ta taxes accordingly, that's on them. That has nothing to do with Binance. And that's my whole beef with the U.S. and their overreaching, all right, when it comes to um, their regulations and rules. But again, it's more FUD, okay? It's more fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They're just fudding the place up to, because Bitcoin was on a pump last night. Before I went to bed, like Bitcoin was pumping yesterday. Bitcoin was pumping, pumping. All right, Bitcoin was pumping. 
and it seems like every time Bitcoin is just right there about to reach new highs, we, we get more FUD coming out about something, you know, some regulator somewhere wanting to um, regulate and, you know, use the long arm of the law to, to get someone. All right. So th th that's 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 my um, spiel on that. OK, um, next we have. Justin Sun narrowly misses out on Beeple's record-breaking NFT sale. So uh, Beeple, an artist, sold some NFT at Christie's, nonetheless, for six point six point sixty nine point three million dollars. And Justin Sun, where's this dude getting all this money from? <laughs> anyway, Justin Sun made a bid for it and almost uh, made it, and then someone outbid him by uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars at the last minute. So that, that's what this, this article is about. The the real article I want to talk about with NFTs has to do with NFT immutability, immutability debate. And this is coming from Bitcoin.com. And uh, grows as tokenized tweets get deleted and NFT images are replaced. All right. Over the last few months, NFT, and I'm sorry, over the last two years, NFT space has heated up and NFTs has become a uh, topical conversation in the cryptocurrency community many supporters believe that nfts are going to be huge and transform everything from the art industry to online gaming others believe that nfts are completely worthless and nothing more than the hype seen during the initial ico um phase of 2017. all right um nfts are here to stay um and people are just uh hating on nfts you know the, the future in the future, you'll be able to just like Ready Player One, take your um, specialized swords or specialized skins from, say, Halo, and bring it into um, Modern Warfare or bring it into get, uh, Grand Theft Auto or something like that, right? And, and vice versa. So that that's where I see it go, going in the future. All right, but um, the the mutability of it, all right, where just like uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a truly immutable uh, blockchain. You can't change or undo a transaction once it happened. And what we're seeing is um, people are saying that that's not the case here with NFTs, all right? So fun fact, uh, Bertrand said, I minted NFTs in a few a few years back for my hybrid Metapunks. I stored them in IPFS, all right, which is an international planetary file, file system. Here it is, inter, uh, international interplanetary file system, okay? I still have them because I also stored them on AWS, which is Amazon Web Services S3. All the IPFS versions have disappeared. So if they're truly immutable, how are they disappearing? How are they getting deleted? All right. So again, just be careful out there. And we're seeing an artist. He did a rug pull. This art, an artist, he said, I just pulled the rug at my NFT collection on OpenSea. Nobody got hurt. And this this is what it was, right? We're seeing this is the artwork right here, and he pulled them and literally pulled the rug <laughs> and changed the images to to rugs. <laughs> this, this is hilarious. Yo, artists artists are funny people. Um, it's pretty easy to change the JPEG, all right? The J, um, even if it does not belong to me or um, it is on auction. So that's what he's saying. So. Even when somebody buys it, he could still change it. That's crazy. Okay, that, that's really crazy. I'm an artist, my decision, right? A thread from somebody uh, making his living with our IRL about the value of NFTs. All discussions about the value of NFTs are meaningless as long as the tokens is not inseparable from the artist's artwork itself. So again, just be careful out there what platforms you're buying your artwork from, your NFTs from, all right? Until it's actually on a blockchain. Uh, I just say be careful out there, man. All right. Um, yeah, this this that's crazy. The fact that he could change it, even after it's, it, it was it's sold. Let's talk about it in the comment section below. You know I mean, when you purchase an NFT, is it yours or is it still the artist? Because my understanding is it's mine once I purchase it, and when I sell it, right, that the artist still gets a cut. And that's fine. I, I'm I'm cool with that. Okay, I'm cool with that. They they still get a five to ten percent cut depending on what the um parameters they set in the NFT. But if they're 
if they could just change the JPEG at any time, then I really don't own it. Okay, it's like on loan to me for a very expensive price. So let's talk about it in the comment section. And let's talk about Justin Sun spending almost seventy billion seventy million dollars. Like, where's this dude getting all his money from? I don't know. And um, CZ saying, "Hey, it's it's a it's not a bull market without some fud." <laughs> All right, they're coming after CZ and Binance for no reason, in my opinion. And we have um, BlockFi. BlockFi could be insolvent and Terry Crews launching his own coin. We are definitely in a, in a hype cycle right now and definitely a bull run. It wouldn't be a bull run without uh, celebrities launching their own coins. It's Sergeant Crypto and I'm out. Peace.